tonight it's the finals. Uh, if you haven't tuned into a Slice episode before, you're in for a really, really crazy one tonight. We have our two contestants, our finalists tonight, in uh, David Robinson, who goes by D-Rob, and a lot of you are folk know all about him. For some of you folk who don't know his competitor, Ethan Douglas has only placed in the top three in modeling every single time he's competed this season. A Python user who works at The Athletic, a data analyst, and through Sliced, he is now uh, declaring himself uh, a data scientist. It truly is uh, a battle of titans tonight, uh, and I'm so excited to share everything we have in store with y'all tonight. All the surprises, all the twists. Tonight we'll be looking at uh, default loans. Meg, you want to walk us through a little of the data set? Yeah, so we've got a, a data set uh, about loans from small businesses. They'll be predicting the loan uh, default amount. So they've got data about the borrowers. So where these businesses are located, uh, the industry that they're part of, a number of other characteristics. This is the first time that we'll be using uh, mean absolute error as our eva evaluation metric tonight. Uh, we do have live look in at least uh, in terms of cams, they're cammed up. And uh, we'll also get some interviews with our contestants as we go through. Yeah, so we've got some fun golden features tonight. Our first golden feature, again, both are worth five points, is that we wanna see our competitors uh, make a plot uh, with year on the x-axis and then on the y-axis amount defaulted. And we want to see some kind of annotation on the plot, text somewhere, or if it's in the title, subtitle, caption, uh, that comments about recessions in the early 2000s, mid 2000s. Um, so that's something that you'll see in the data and we kind of want to see them pull out that insight. Uh, the second golden feature is a bar chart plotting industry sector on one axis and amount defaulted on the other axis. We want to see, in addition to that, we want to see a marker showing the average amount defaulted. Ethan literally just- <laughs> Some stretches, yeah. Ethan literally not just stretching, he took the sweater off, he got the water in, <laughs> headphones in. You know what that means, y'all. Here they go. It is uh, hands on keyboard time. We're looking at Ethan Douglas's screen. Um, you know, I was doing like the screen share check and he was kind of, I mean, he was typing exactly this, import pandas, says PD, yada, yada. And he's like, the, I'm just getting some more reps in before the show tonight. So I'm almost like, you know, he even admits like they won't use this, but he's been like practicing and repping so much. It's like literal like muscle memory that he just like spits these imports, uh, <laughs> imports out of his fingertips. He's not copying and pasting this, y'all. This He literally just went key value params on Seaborn set theme from memory. But here we are with D-Rob. He does have a game plan. He did just check the histogram for uh, amount loaned. And remember, there's a lot of loans that they, they already get paid back. So you're going to see a ton of zeros. This means that uh, the loan amount That's defaulted right. is nothing. They paid off in full their loans. Uh, these loan amounts over here, those are loans that are outstanding. These are loans that uh, these small businesses have defaulted on. So you could think about this in one to two ways. You could either think about this problem as a uh, how much one company might have defaulted if they did or if they didn't, or you could think about it as a classifier first, will they default, and then the amount second. So there's a like few different ways to approach this problem. Tell us a little bit about how you've uh, picked up and found Cat Boost useful throughout the season. I think we've seen you use that in your approach every episode. It's great. Uh, <laughs> shout out to Kanzi. Um, it's been fun to learn like a new gradient boosted tree decision model. I've previously just kind of used XGBoost and then I dabbled mm -hmm. with uh, Light GBM. I really enjoyed it and it's just really cool. It handles categorical variables very well. This data set has a lot of those. I think most data sets in real life have a lot of categorical variables. Never expected it to be like the only thing I used. I always thought I tried a couple of times and I would just always choose whatever model works best, which is still what I do, but yeah, it's right. always cat boosts. Like, right, right. I have yet to find a data set we've used that I've beaten the cat boost score. I've beaten it by ensembling, but I've yet to beat it with, yeah, just another straight up model. Are you familiar with loan data or any sort of default type data? No, I'm not big on finance, business, um, anything. I don't really like things in dollars amounts and certainly don't like making people default on loans. Yeah, I've never been into like finance or banking. I didn't do any business classes in college. I did science-y stuff. We will be checking in with D-Rob, I believe in just four minutes, so. We are checking out mm -hmm. right now uh, a plot of gross percent of loans discharged in default. So he has by bank and then total loans approved. And then that is actually on a plot of 
uh, default percent, which is actually pretty interesting. D-Rob has this really big knack for his ability to synthesize three-way interactions in really palatable mm -hmm. ways. And even though this looks a little basic, he, uh, this is a lot of information to ingest really simply. So, so yet, a, yet another plus in favor of the data viz warrior himself uh less than a minute to go before we go to d rob here right now uh he is wa walking away okay okay there, there he there he goes <laughs> you know not many championship competitions do you see someone literally walk away from the thing that they need to be 100 percent focused on for the next two hours yeah wouldn't it be funny if you then like walked in on one of our screens or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a really fun data set. Uh, I'll tell you, it, it um, right away threw in this, uh, this. I think the curveball, like mean absolute error, it's not as uh, on data that is like can also represent as a percentage. Is I think kind of uh, really interesting. I'm definitely thinking about how both to interpret that and then how to model it. Really thinking about how to predict it. Like, should I predict it as an amount or should I predict it as a percentage of gross approval and mm -hmm. then um, and then put in the amount. And if I do so, is am I going to get into trouble because the um, it matters more that we get I get the larger loans correct than the smaller loans. So if there's systematic difference between those, yep. I might be leaving some signal on the table. Uh, I'll tell you that there's there's a lot of one thing that is different from some of my previous ones. There's I can just tell from glancing at some of these there are a lot. Here we go. Uh, for the state, there's mm -hmm. a lot of categorical variables with a lot of signal in them. Yep. Uh, so like and. It doesn't necessarily look like it's as simple as say, I, I could I turn states or zip codes into longitude and latitude. Not so clear that I can right. that I can really um that I can really do that. And I am, I might still do that, but I'm trying to apply it to something numeric. But that means I'm gonna have to think about how to put both categorical and numeric variables into a really effective model. That means I might be doing an ensemble combination of um of XG boost and and a linear model. We were wondering in chat here, uh, are you familiar with any loan type data or default type data? Have you worked with any kind of the, like this this type of data before or in the past? No, no, nope, I don't think I've worked with default with with, with predicting defaults before. Uh, let's go over to Ethan because Ethan is actually plotting uh, a few things that we haven't seen him plot before. He is doing it looks like similar plots to to what. Uh, we were just seeing over on D-Rob's screen, except in Seaborn, and uh, not horizontal, but uh, just vertical plots, your typical bar plots here, uh, plotting state, and it looks like uh, maybe a number of loans given in a state, or or perhaps a, a default amount, but I'm guessing it's number of loans there. Oh, yes. Ooh, this is, uh, this is, he's looking at year default amount. Oh, wait, this is, a time series plot. he just needs to put, oh my god, he just needs to. We just to, need an annotation. He yeah. literally just needs the title. So notice, y'all, there were two recessions through the early 2000s and the mid 2000s the mid 2000s one in america y'all will know that as the great recession but in the early 2000s there was also a recession uh this was known as somewhat ending the dot-com bubble uh that ended up coming into a recession for us in america here but if he's able to just say what these are these two points in time here, he will, th this would, this would be like, well, he's five points away. Close. He is, close. He is yeah. so close. So yeah, he's really ha Ooh, here we go. The 2008 re recession. <laughs> Sucked. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> do, do we say that that's it? That's well, did, he he did, we, he noted the hold on what 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 was in the what was in our notes? And there is an annotation on the plot title or text somewhere about recessions in the early two thousands and the mid two thousands. Ah, uh, he needs so, both. He does need both. He needs the dot com bubble also sucked. Pets dot com. Yeah, yeah Ethan. Yeah, what what happened to pets dot com? <laughs> uh, D-Rob with the one submission, and so with Ethan, they're still uh, tuning through. You can see right now on uh, D-Rob's screen here, uh, he's trying to figure out number of trees as he uh, cuts through his data, and it looks like here, pseudo -hu Huber error is improving MAE. So uh, he is uh, using a Huber regression in this case. Uh, but not really. Okay, but it, always... but pseudo, pseudo, pseudo. <laughs> <Hello>? <laughs> Somewhat, <laughs> but not quite. Is this a GG animate? And he's going through a year. I can't allow this to impress me two weeks in a row. A few moments later. Yeah, this is actually pretty cool. <laughs> a great facet here by industry, and this is so so close to another golden feature. He is literally sniffing around the golden feature areas, and uh, he is like right there. He is targeting them. Uh, we are inviting all of the contestants and all the folks
Oh my god, is Ethan really... Okay, oh my god. Let's, let's hold that thought. What are we looking at here? Okay, well, Ethan almost ab aborted his colonel, which is the equivalent of an R-bomb. We'll see what D-Rob's got here. He is going to upload his newest. I do want to see this, but Ethan's face, y'all, is frustration, okay? It is It is nothing short of frustration. D-Rob with the newest submission does move him up the leaderboard. He is beating all zeros now. He is in seventh on the public leaderboard with that second submission. Uh, he has beaten all zeros. So uh, at the very least, he is better than that standard prediction of all zeros that a lot of folks have started with. And that does mean he is inching himself closer towards perhaps that knife mag. We, are we seeing D-Rob? Is he going to pull off building a shiny app in seven minutes? There's no this way. Is, is he actually is, doing that? Yeah. He has loaded in the shiny yeah. library. There's no way. What are the what are the widgets he's going to put in this? Like year, <laughs> year and state? This is a flex. This is a flex. I mean, this is what he can do with all the time that he's afforded himself by not memeing. If that is the case, we have never seen that before. Aha! Uh -huh. We are seeing Ethan with his uh, signature screenshot of the leaderboard uh, surpassing D Rob. What? We go over to Ethan. Oh my he's god! On the leaderboard, but. Uh, no way! Uh, he says, LOL, I know it's just 300 predictions, but this is hilarious. Oh my um, god! Are you kidding me? <laughs> and there's Ethan. Feel he's doing a little uh, victory lap there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, this is a lot closer than I thought. I thought D Rob was actually running away with this because I didn't think Ethan was actually going to be able to get the juice here. But uh, here we are. Go back over to D Rob because I do want to see less than four minutes to go if this is going to actually be possible. D Rob with a shiny app. Uh, <laughs> he's did it. it. Is. Yeah. There it is, he's got a shiny app, what the hell? He fucking did it, I can't. Oh, <laughs> With literally three minutes remaining in the entire first season, we have yet another sliced first. It is a shiny app I am, on stream tonight. I'm actually jaw dropped. Less than a minute to go, 30 seconds to go, really. Uh, looks like he's actually uh, trying to add more uh, drop downs. He's going by bank now. Uh, does he have the time to do it? Uh, he needs to hit enter here, yes. and he gets it. Yeah. He gets yeah. it. We do see one more here is from it? Ethan. He uh, does change up to some fuchsia plot, but that is it. That is pencils down for our contestants. That was that was sliced. Wow. <laughs> what a way to end it. So this is one point to either D-Rob or Ethan. Uh, vote for who you personally want to see win... Uh, sliced tonight be our first uh, sliced champion, our season one champion. And D Rob has won the first points of the evening, or rather, first point of the ev evening. So uh, the first golden feature was a uh, plot of uh, X as year, Y as amount defaulted. But we also wanted to see an annotation calling out the recessions, plural. Plural. So in the early 2000s and the mid 2000s, there are two recessions. Uh, we see a look of utter abject horror on Ethan's face right now. I am so sorry, Ethan. He got the Extremely great recession, close. but he didn't get the dot com bubble. Yeah. Our second golden feature was uh, it was a bar chart plotting industry sector on one axis and amount defaulted on the other axis. And again, we wanted to see some sort of annotation. Uh, we wanted to see a marker showing the average amount defaulted. So we did not see any of our contestants uh, plot that. Yeah, so neither of our contestants uh, ended up uh, discovering golden features. I think that brings us to the data visualization portion and we cut the data visualization points in half. We sliced them the same way we sliced the golden features from 40 to 20 points uh, for our two finalists tonight. Last time we Are do this, ready? Meg. I know, I know. Data viz points. Three, two, one. Uh, I have six to four D Rob. You have seven to three D Rob. Ethan was, you know, really bringing a lot of like quantity and I think a lot more variety uh, in the data visualizations that he's creating than, uh, you know, he did last week or, yeah, in the finals, uh, which really it did impress me. But I think D Rob, as always, you know, brings it when it comes to data visualization. Nick, you actually put it really nicely. The way he chooses to really, in a way, succinctly visualize a number of different factors 
in a way that's that makes that plot highly interpretable without being like overwhelming is you know it's just i guess what you would call elegant when it comes to data visualization and i think the big thing for for me and Ethan's score was he did improve from last week and that definitely helped a lot. We saw a lot of things in terms of mapping for him and one attention to detail that we that I really liked seeing was that lat long plus uh, including Alaska and, and Hawaii. It's that kind of stuff that I think like that does let the, the all the data breathe. D-Rob, uh, in my opinion, did hit it out of the park on that side. I liked seeing uh, that GG animate over a year and uh, I, we, you know, we did see a lot of uh, the time series stuff through the shiny episode. That, that's where the six versus the four came from. We should do our totals really quick. All right, so our totals are, uh, Ethan is at seven points that he's earned through data visualization from Nick and I. Then David, D-Rob, with 14 points. Uh, Modeling will determine who wins. Oh, you're killing me, Nick. <laughs> Ethan has a score, an MAE of... Remember, lower <laughs> MAE wins. One, four, one, two, seven. All right. Okay. The lower score wins the Slice Championship. D Rob has an MAE of one, three, nine, nine, three. D Rob wins the championship, wins modeling. His first modeling win in the contest is the finals. Wow. wow. So <gasps> congratulations to D-Rob. Congrats, y'all. D-Rob, our champion. Congratulations, D-Rob, on winning the championship. I have to say thanks so much to Ethan. Uh, he was a, a, a... I was um, I was really confident in the last couple of weeks that uh, that Ethan was going to win the modeling side of this, uh, and I I put everything I could into into it, and um, it was close. And yeah, he was a, it was a real honor to compete against him. I think it was really this was a really intellectually challenging one. Uh, it wasn't a matter of just get all the hybrid mm -hmm. parameters right. It wasn't a matter of, of tuning the right features. It was one we really had to think about the relationship between the fe between um, the predictions and the output. Uh, so I I. Knew by the end of the first hour that it was going to be a really hard one, that uh, it was going to be a really hard one to beat, and I just tried a couple of uh, of strategies, and uh, yeah, it looks like I got lucky. Um, well, I, I wouldn't consider it luck. It seems like a lot of experience and a, a, a lot of a uh, fine tune models there, uh, and how you know everyone wants to know in chat, how do you feel about uh, whipping out a shiny app? within five, three, five minutes there. I have been meaning to do a shiny app in the last three laps. And oh, I wow. keep, I keep uh, I, and uh, eventually I did decide to just to save it till the finals. Usually I feel like uh, 15 to 20 minutes is plenty to get like, to really get something up that can be, mm -hmm. that can be helpful in exploring the data. Here I, I just had 10 minutes left where I knew I, I made a submission. I didn't think I could improve it. I was like, this, minutes let's let's get one out so i'm um, yeah i'm excited to i'm glad i got an opportunity to uh to play with that at some point this uh this year yeah that's right and uh and now that we know we'll be sending that knife over to you uh big question are you coming back for season two to defend the championship you can keep me away <laughs> <laughs> i love to hear it i love to hear it perfect uh, let's talk to Ethan. Yeah, I mean, hats off to, to D-Rob. It's like I said earlier, I knew he was going to really, really bring it after, after, uh, not winning the modeling last round and, uh, wasn't my night. I mean, this is the worst modeling I've had in a competition yet. So I haven't, haven't gone outside the top three on the leaderboard yet. So, um, I'm very curious to see what juice I left unsqueezed and I probably won't sleep tonight until I figure that out. And and can get a score that's top three on the leaderboard. So <laughs> obviously disappointed, but you know, it is what it is. He was a better better competitor in, in every single way tonight. So well, that's off to him. Well, Ethan, we do think that you were uh, not just uh, a good competitor, not just a great competitor, but one of the best, obviously here in the finals. Uh, will we see you coming back season two to maybe uh, uh, do it all again and put your name down as a champion. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see what season two looks like. We'll see what uh, my calendar has in store. But I mean, oh, I don't like losing. I really don't <laughs> like losing. So if I come back, I'll be I'll be winning. I mean, this has just been so fun. Like everyone has been amazing, been so supportive. Pretty much 
what a lot of the audience hasn't seen is almost after every single night, uh, either in Nick's Discord and like the Data Science channel or in the the Slice channel, people are talking about like their strategies, posting links to things that help them, walking through like what features were useful, and everyone has been willing to. to I mean, Kanzi showed me Cat Boost. Like everyone's mm -hmm. been so willing to help each other, uh, support each other in an incredible community that you all have created. And uh, it's just been great to learn from everyone. Everyone's been awesome. And I'd love to keep in touch with everyone. Stay on the line here. And uh, uh, we're excited to oh, share with yeah. you all some some cool stuff. So, so the winner does get this knife. I'm going to show this knife right now. Here's the knife. That uh, that we saw we, we've showed off. You can see here uh, it is engraved the Slice logo here. It's a, it's a nice chef's knife. And on the back of this, on the back side of here, we will be engraving uh, D Rob's name. All the semifinalists will be getting 11 by 14 inch uh, GG IRL prints. So that is using the GG Plot 2 library and using the GG IRL uh, from Jacqueline no less. And the winner which is D-Rob, will actually be getting a special print. So uh, D-Rob will be getting a handmade watercolor GG plot uh, print of his choice. So uh, uh, you have earned that as well. So congrats to D-Rob. We have a couple of prizes for both of our finalists tonight, thanks to uh, Z, by Z by HP, our supporter. Um, they'll both be getting Z by HP laptops. Um, these are preloaded with Ubuntu. These actually come uh, with RTX 3080s. Did I say well. something else? No, no, I, no, I think oh, you, okay. I, you did say yeah. that, but just I just wanted to emphasize, later, yeah. I wanted to emphasize that. Yeah. Uh, that's also not all. That's not all? What? Uh, Chat, can you believe this? So for the, for the champ, we do have one more thing. For the support from our, our great supporters over at NVIDIA, uh, we do have for our, our winner, um, this graphics card, this is an RTX 8000. This is made for ray tracing, deep learning. This is actually uh, 48 gigs. Uh, so it's the largest uh, RAM card out there. <laughs> uh, you can do all sorts of things with this. Uh, and uh, I, Yeah, you can render some pretty badass <laughs> high quality memes with that. That is right. Uh, <laughs> so you will, so yeah, you know, one of these would be good for uh, a server rack. Uh, this is all yours. <laughs> Thanks to Z or thanks to uh, Nvidia uh, and their support. So congrats, D Rob. We'll be sending this over to you, as well as the laptop um, and the knife. So congratulations to our contestants. A big shout out to not just D, D Rob and Ethan, but thanks Landon, Julia, Jesse, Michael, Josh, Jordan, uh, Kenzie, Greg, uh, Scott. Josiah, Kyle, Tony, Craig, and Adrian, thank you for all of you competing uh, in the back of the house, doing our video production. Thank you, Tony. Uh, thanks for all the YouTube help. I appreciate uh, all the artwork, all the assets that we have, all that sliced vibe that you see on screen. That's all from Veronica over at Salt and Fog. Thank you for designing all of that for us. And appreciate all the data and the QA checking from Ghetto Bob. Uh, we've also had Tony help on the, uh, these episodes uh, after the play, or after he was uh, gone from the gone from the contestant pool. And Fat is awesome again. Appreciate all the help with data dictionaries and QA. And again, huge huge support from R Studio, Streamlit, Nvidia, Z by HP, Kaggle, and GG IRL. I appreciate all that help that you all put in. Uh, to keep this going and, and make the production really high quality and uh, make it a really fun environment for our community. So thank you to all of y'all for for me and Meg. Well, thank you, Meg. Oh, thank you, Nick. You're a yeah. great co-host. And uh, uh, this yeah. was such an enjoyable, fun experience. Uh, I am, I'm so happy that, uh, to be able to do it with uh, a fantastic professional first time game shows, but also a great friend. So thank you. Oh, Nick. Same, same to you. Thank you for teaching me about Twitch. So uh, yeah, taking a bet on me and uh, making me your co-host and collaborator. It's been fabulous. I, I believe it's yeah. time to cheers. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. To all of our contestants, everyone who's helped us out on Slice this season and all of you chat, uh, this really doesn't move unless y'all are in here spamming emotes, hanging out, making chat what it is. We literally do this not because uh, we, we get to go see some great data scientists every week, but we do it 
so y'all can see them and interact and hang out and uh, really big on that community building that we have. So toast to y'all, chat. Thank y'all for coming in every week. Cheers, Meg. Yeah. Cheers. Um, Somehow we kind of timed that. Okay. <laughs> Um, with that, y'all, that's Slice. Yeah, outstanding. So thankful. So thankful for, for everybody that has, you know, been part of and really helped us to create this as a community. It didn't have to be a community, but it has become a community. And uh, I really couldn't be happier about that. Good night, chat. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, and that is Slice. I hope you all had a really fun time. Mm-hmm.